low again. This is the second part of the video for the function of the B cells. In this part, we're going to see the germinal center reaction, the process that makes B cells become specialists in producing specific antibodies. So first, we're going to see where the germinal centers develop. Germinal centers do not pre-exist. They develop inside the lymph nodes, triggered by the contact of an antigen with a lymphocyte. Let's make a quick recap in the lymph node structure. Lymph nodes are secondary lymphoid organs. They look like beans and they are connected to each other with lymph vessels, in green here. The region around the lymph vessels is called the medullary sinus and it contains macrophages, the cells that present the antigens to the other cells. The yellow region is called medulla and this is where plasma cells, the B cells capable of producing antibodies, are located. Then we have the paracortical zone, the white zone here, which is rich in T cells. Finally, the pink region in, is the cortex containing B lymphocytes. Now, this structure inside the lymph node is called follicle. Follicles can be primary, meaning immature, containing naive B lymphocytes, not in contact yet with an antigen, or secondary follicles formed after exposure to an antigen. The small red circle is called the germinal center, formed from rapidly dividing cells after antigen stimulation. Let's zoom in to take a closer look. Now, this is the primary follicle. The small blue cells are the naive B cells while these red bizarre cells are called follicular dendritic cells, FDCs for short. Antigens like this yellow dot are caught by dendritic cells and presented to the B cells. The purpose of the germinal center reaction is to create B cells capable of producing perfectly matching antibodies to these antigens matching like this. Okay, you get the idea. Now, the secondary follicle will be formed once the antigen enters the lymph node. Three distinct zones will be created in the secondary follicle. The dark zone and the light zone. Together they form the germinal center. The marginal zone contains the naive cells that are now marginalized to the periphery of the follicle. The B cells proliferate and hypermutate in the germinal center dark zone as centroblasts. Centroblasts migrate to the germinal center light zone, differentiating it to centrocytes. Naive B cells stay in the periphery of the follicle, the marginal zone. Now, how can I learn easily what happens during the germinal center reaction? Only through a story. Let's say that the primary follicle here is a playground. Blue dots are the naive B cells. Let's imagine them like happy primary school kids that play around here. Okay. Then a funny dude comes, dressed up like a tree. Yes, you well got the point. FDC, funny dude comes, is to remember follicular dendritic cells. Great. The funny dude holds a shiny treasure, like this one. 
So far, so good. So, bigger kids come and push the naive kids to almost outside of the follicle, in the marginal zone. So, they now have almost all the playground for them. It is now called the game zone. Game as G for germinal, right? The game is so good that more and more kids will come. They start proliferating in the dark room down here, the dark zone. So, what will happen to the dark room? The purpose of the game is to make up costumes perfectly matching with the jewels of the treasure. So, guys in here in the dark room, the dark zone, are costume builders. Yes. CB is to remember centroblasts. Okay. So, once the centroblasts proliferate and combine textiles and colors to make up the perfect matching costume, aka they proliferate and hypermigrate in the dark zone, they are now ready to come to the light. The light zone contains costume carriers, centrocytes. Yes, again, everything makes sense here. So, if a guy does not wear a costume that perfectly matches the jewels of the treasure, this guy is eliminated, he goes on apoptosis. Guys that wear perfectly matching costumes, they win. So we have the winners. The guys that come from the dark zone to the light zone wearing the perfect suit. And who decides who wears a perfectly matching costume? We need a leader here. Remember, in the recap of this video, we have seen that T-cells are like generals. They tell others what to do. That's the case here as well. T-follicular helper cells will decide which guy dies and which guy wins. And what happens to the winner? The winner can go back to the dark room and continue playing, further maturate and hypermutate to become better and better in the matching game. Or they can exit the dark room and be the plasma cells capable of producing perfectly matching costumes, perfectly matching antibodies. That was the story of the germinals and the reaction. Thank you for watching. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download Scotia.com app now. Thank you.